Hey guys, it's about beer 30. Let's go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for talking about Great Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Buffalo Bayou Brewing. They're out of Houston, Texas. Uh, Rico sent me this beer. Uh, Brandon usually sends me these Texas beers, but Rico sent me this one. Uh, evidently, he can get their beers up there where he's at unless he traded for it. Let me see what he has here. Uh, Buffalo Bayou. Sure, he sent that to me, so I hope I got the right name on this one. Yep, he sure did. He sure did. So, uh, and I think Brandon has sent me some of the Buffalo Bayou beers already. This is their More Cowbell, 9% double IPA, 118 IBUs. Wow, big time bitterness. He said he got this as an extra in a trade two weeks ago. No date, brewery out of Houston, Texas. So he, he actually traded for this beer. So uh, uh, like I said, Brandon usually sends me, because he's down there in Texas, these, uh, these beers from down there. So uh, Rico traded for this beer and he sent it to me. So I don't know how many of me got on a trade and sent me one of them, or if you just traded for this one and sent it to me. So Rico, thanks again, my brother. You're so awesome. Uh, I sure hope you get to come this way in December. And December, this is the 30th, so December 1st is tomorrow. So I don't know exactly when he's coming, if he still is, but I hope he gets a chance to come this way because we're going to get together and we're going we're gonna to have a little party. Uh, maybe I'll get him to set in on one of the beer reviews or something. And, uh, We'll go from there. Uh, a lot of people are camera shy and don't want to be on. A lot of people don't mind it. So uh, we'll see. We'll see. And we're going to drink something good. We may even crack over one of those utopias up on the mound up there. Uh, he's been a good friend to me and sent me tons of beer. Uh, I owe him out to Wasu. So Rico, thanks again, my brother. I do appreciate it, sir. You are an awesome gentleman, scholar, and you know, great taste in craft beer. Thanks again. Uh, let's get on with this one. Uh, some people love this beer and some people don't really care for it. So we'll see what this ends up uh, being. A lot of writing on the back of this can. I am not going to read it. Uh, it says here, do not ask for whom the cowbell tolls. The cowbell tolls for thee. Uh, there is no dating on the bottom of this can. And like I said, I don't think Rico said anything about dating on this. Uh, Buffalo Bayou, trade in, no date. Uh, so, uh, if you're going to produce an IPA or a double IPA, guys, you need that machine that puts the date on the cans. That way we know whether what the age of it is. So, I tell you this day after day, and a lot of people get sick and tired of me talking about it, but that's my job. Uh, we got to call these breweries out that's producing these beers and not dating their stuff. Uh, if you want to produce these beers, you need to date it. So, enough said about that. We're not going to harp on it very much. If it ends up being very, very tasty, I'm going to tell you it's very, very tasty. If it ends up being a damn malty mess, we will tell you that too. So, hopefully it will not be. Uh, I don't think there's anything else. There's no commercial description here. Uh, so, we're going to jump straight over to the food pairings, and I'm going to pop the cap on this. Cuisine is barbecue, cheese with pepper, with Monterey, pepper jack, sharp blue cheddar, <coughs> excuse me, the stronger cheeses, Gorgonzola Limburger, uh, glassware snifter, tulip oversized wine glass, they got my favorite snifter, and because it's a 9%er, they say here on uh, Beer Advocate that you can sell it, 
that'd be a foolish mistake. Don't sell your IPAs or double IPAs, guy. It's hard enough to get these damn guys to put dates on the shit, much less them thinking it's okay for them to, to give it a 3, 6, 12 month shelf life and not date their shit. I'm not going to fly in this guy's book. It ain't going to happen. So, if you don't date your shit, I'm going to call you out on it. Count on it. About a finger of head. Uh, a nice uh, amber color on the beer. Kind of cloudy up here on the big bulb part. I can see the light through the thin part down here. A nice amber color. Uh, a great looking beer. Perfect head, about a finger of head on that pour. That's about what you want. Anything more than that's excessive. You don't need it. It's just taking up glass space and you got to wait before you can drink it. And it's just, that's the perfect head space. You want about a finger of head on the pour. Anything more than that's excessive, anything less than that seems to be undercarbonated. So, let's get a nose on it. Slight hint of some citrusiness there, but I am detecting some heavy maltiness, guys. The malt is overpowering the hops. Sad. So, another reason we need to date so we know how old the beer is. Is this beer... One month, two months, three months, six months, twelve months. How old is the freaking beer? If you're expecting a hoppy double IPA with a can that has no date on it, you're just taking your chances. You're you're playing a Russian roulette with that pistol. Maybe it's going to blow my head off. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm going to get a good beer. Maybe I'm going to get an old one. Now it's kind of malty to me, guys. Let's dive in and see what we got. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Hints of citrusiness in there. Definitely got a stronger malt backbone than I care for on a double IPA. Maybe a slight hint of some tangerines in there. Not a big pineiness, not a big grapefruitiness, not a big pineappleness to it. I'm getting strong bitterness on the back end with 118 IBUs. Not blown away right now. Uh, we're going to see if we can get the rest of this in there, see if it clouds it up anymore. It does look kind of cloudy coming out of the very end of the can there. It is a rather cloudy beer, guys. I will give you that. And it doesn't say anything about being unfiltered or anything as far as I can see on the can. Of course, I'm not reading all this very tiny writing they've got. They've got a whole, the whole back of the can is written with a, with a little teeny writing on it. And on the bottom it says, please avoid dancing with the cowbell in the, in the pale moonlight. Please avoid looking directly at more cowbell. Do not taunt more cowbell. You know, when they write little stupid shit like that on the bottom of the can here, Instead of putting a date on the bottom of the can. They're giving us a lot of stupid shit written on the bottom of it. Instead of giving us pertinent information that we need. And they're not putting it on there. So, And I find that a lot of times on the beer. Is that, or they'll write, they'll have a dating machine and they'll write something stupid on there. that has nothing to do with the date. You know. I'm just not a fan of that. I mean, uh, the smart ass remarks that they want to put on the bottom. Or, or tell a story that means absolutely nothing to the normal beer uh, connoisseur or, or consumer or beer drinker, uh, yeah, they're just putting up, filling up space on the can. Give me pertinent information. Date, can on, bottled on, IBUs, ABV. So they do have the ABV on there, but that's all the pertinent information we got. So, well, I'm going to sip on it for a while, see what we end up with. Not overly pressed right now. We're going to let it warm up and sip on it for a little bit. See where we end up. I'll be right back. I'm just going to be as honest as I can with you guys. If it's a good beer, I'm going to tell you that. If it's not, I'm going to tell you that. But not having the date on it may influence that decision because we don't know how old it is. I'll be right back. All right, guys, I'm back. I'm going to sip on it for a little bit. I will tell you straight up that I have like this beer. She did. Uh, she thought it was tasty. Me, not so much. Uh, unless it had something on the can or the bottle that's saying 
English style or something like that. Uh, I'm expecting a big hop aroma and a big hop taste on a double IPA, an American style I, double IPA. Uh, this one, now that it's warmed up a little bit, I'm getting some nice citrusy tangerine orange notes, a little bit of grapefruit in it, which I wasn't getting a whole lot of grapefruit when it was right out of the fridge. But it does have that in there, so it's a little better after it's warmed up a little bit than it was right out of the fridge. Uh, and the European style beers, the English style beers, especially in the IPAs or double IPAs, and they're using European hops. Uh, they're more of that earthy, herbal, floral type hops with the Kent Goldings or the Saz or Tetanang hops. Uh, uh, this is the style of hops that's grown over there. Uh, to me, uh, this is a, a mixture of both. Uh, now that it's warmed up, I am getting a little more of the, of the grapefruit uh, taste to it. Uh, it does still have a big maltiness to it. And a lot of uh, breweries like that malt hop balance. Uh, to me, cold, I thought the malt was a little heavier than it should be. And now that it's warmed up, uh, it's got a fairly nice balance to it. So my opinion has changed a little bit since I first took a couple of drinks out of it. Uh, cold out of the refrigerator. So... Uh, Decent beer, guys. Uh, we still need to date on the bottom of the can. Instead of putting a lot of a bunch of horse shit on the back of it, it doesn't mean anything to anybody that's buying the beer. Uh, we need to have that date. So we'll know this was done on this month and day or whatever. So and that's all I'm going to say about the dating. Uh, we just need to have that. If you're producing this style of beer, you need to have a dating machine. So with that being said, still getting a strong maltiness on the nose. And to me on the nose, uh, the malt is overpowering the hops, which tends me to think it's more of an East Coast or English style. But now that it's warmed up on the taste, I am giving a little bit more of the citrusiness and the uh, grapefruit and orange and tangerine taste to it. So, decent beer. Not outstanding. I don't think it's quite to the A category. And I probably wouldn't give it an A anyway without a date. Uh, definitely wouldn't get to 10 without a date. Uh, but uh, it is a nice beer. It is a nice beer. So uh, I'm going to go right to the corner. I'll just try to be as honest as I can with you guys. Decent beer, but not outstanding. We need, to, we need these guys to realize it's important to people like me and you that, uh, that our season... IPA or double IPA drinkers that we want to see that date before we buy it to know how old the beer is. Final check. Awesome lace that can get swept on the glass. I do find it a very tasty beer. If it had a date on the can, it would probably get an A-. Uh, to me, uh, I'm going to give it to B+. Plus. Uh, but still, we want to see when it was done. So, with that being said, uh, guys, B+, plus, I'm going to give it an 88. Uh, it does taste a little better now that it's come up to room temperature than it did right out of the fridge. I thought it was going to be a B- minus or even a less than that. But it does have a nice redeeming quality once it's warmed up. So That's where I'm going to put it. We'll jump over to Beer Advocate. They say... 83, which is in the good range, uh, I'll give it better numbers than that. Uh, so, uh, then, like I said, beer tastes are subjective, guys. They are very, very subjective, especially depending on where your palate is and how many different kinds of beers that you've had. Uh, what I might find is a 10 beer, you may say, oh, my God, if your palate's not to that stage, you may say, oh, my God, I'll never buy that again, and vice versa. What I may find is, is a C or a B beer, you may say, oh, that's the best thing I ever had. That's that's how it works. That's how it works. This is just my opinion, just my two cents. Uh, but with me, I've done almost 2,300 uh, beer reviews, and by the time you see this one, I'm several weeks ahead with the beers that's been sent to me. So this may post to not post till middle of December, or even closer to Christmas before this beer review is done, and I'm doing it on the 30th of November. So uh, still a tasty beer. I will say that. Uh, 83, like I said, from those guys over there, and we will run over to 
Beer Advocate, I mean, uh, Rate Beer, and Rate Beer says overall 74 and 30 in the style. Those guys over there were not impressed with this beer. And I wasn't either when I first tasted this, but after it warmed up, I can see where they were going with this beer. But we still need to date. Final check in. We'll go up and untapped, and they have it at 3.81, which is a B. Plus. That's exactly where I'm putting it. Uh, it, it, did, it did warm up, and I got a little more hot presence on that beer. Definitely not a West Coast style, guys. If you're expecting that big piney grapefruit, pineapple taste, uh, you're going to be disappointed with this one. But uh, taking that with a grain of salt, uh, it is a well made beer. We can just get these guys at. Uh, at Buffalo Bayou to do some kind of dating on the cans. Uh, uh, that is the key, in my opinion, not to have a best buy or enjoyed buy, but an actual canned or bottled on date and let us make that decision whether we want to either purchase it if it's two, three, four, six months old or not. So that's where it is. That's what I give it. And that's what everybody else is giving it. If you've had this one from Buffalo Bayou, the more cowbell, and I'm a drummer, I like more cowbell. Oh yeah. So, and for our, for a final comment here, guys, I, I'm gonna jump off subject here. Uh, I'm out of the cabinet business, as a lot of you that probably know. The gun store is up and running. All of you people that are local to the Roanoke or Salem or even the Virginia area, uh, that's how it works. If you're interested in and and, and coming by and purchasing something from me, a uh, concealed carry weapon or, or anything like that. If you live in Virginia, we can do it pow pow, just quick like that. Out of state sales, eh, not so much. That's how it works. I mean, it's state to state is very, very different. So if you're interested, we got a concealed carry class it's happening on the 17th of uh, December at 10 o'clock if you're in the area. And I'm not even sure if this is going to even post before the 17th. So I might be wasting my breath telling you all this. I think it's going to post on the 20th or 21st or even later. I don't know how far ahead I am on the beer reviews. Uh, it makes no difference. But if you're interested, uh, come by and see me at West Salem Tactical, 2715 West Main Street, Salem, Virginia. And uh, we'll get you fixed up, guys. So, uh, back to the beer. If, uh, if you've had it, let me know what you think. And come on back tomorrow. Let's take something tasty out of the fridge, guys. See you then.